I'm author blogger Caroline Fairbanks Critchfield of the blog SoCanShe.com. I'm so excited to be here with you today to share with you a project I designed. It's a small wallet. I call it my fold and stitch wallet. It's great for a child or it's great for you just to throw in your purse. As you see here, there are two card slots. Inside you've got one pocket that's big enough to hold bills or coins, but on the outside there's a secret hidden pocket here that you can hold coins in also. So it's great. And you can also make it from scraps and you can use three different fabrics, one for the interior and two on the exterior. So it's a really fun and fast project. And there are snaps that are optional. You can also use hook and loop tape for the snaps or just leave them out, but I love using snaps. So let's get started. So there are three pattern pieces. You can download the pattern pieces and all the instructions from our website. But there are three pattern pieces, A, B, and C. And you start out by cutting one piece of fabric from each pattern piece and make sure that you put the markings on. On piece A and B, there are markings where you seam them together. And there are also some Velcro markings on each piece. And then you'll seam together piece A and B. And I've got a piece already seamed together here. And you can see it right here, and it has the Velcro markings on it. But before we sew the Velcro on, let's add some stabilizer. I like to use the woven fusible stabilizer. I think it gives it a really good feel. And so I'll add this stabilizer to my piece A and B that are fused together. And I'll also add the stabilizer to my piece C, which is the interior, the whole piece. So after you add your stabilizer, then it's time to add the Velcro. Now, you'll take one piece of Velcro, and this is really wide. It's actually too wide for this project. So it's really simple just to cut the Velcro right down the middle, and that gives us enough for both the interior and the exterior of the project. I've got the scratchy side of the hook and loop tape, and then I've got the soft side. And our exterior here will take one scratchy and one soft, and the interior will take our other piece of scratchy and soft hook and loop tape. And it really doesn't matter if you sew them on like this or like this, just as long as you have one scratchy and one soft on your exterior and your interior. So I'm gonna take this to the machine and sew it on. You can pin this on if you want, but generally I just center it here between my little tick marks. And so right on the edge of the tape. I'm using a regular stitch length of about two and a half, and I'm sewing about, oh, an eighth of an inch from the edge of my hook and loop tape. And the important part is just, if you go too far, you can back up a stitch or two. The important part is just to make sure that it's secure. So you wanna sew all around all four edges. And I'm using a heavy duty needle here just so I don't break it. And I'll really need a heavy duty needle later. And I'm also using a darker thread here so you can see it. You'll probably want to use thread that matches your project or that matches the Velcro white thread. But this brown thread is easy for you to see. I'm going to back up here and back stitch. And now my hook and loop tape, this side is completely secure. So cut your threads. And then you'd want to sew the other one on right here. Now you see I have some already prepared. So this is my exterior piece. I've got the hook and loop tape on both my placement marks. And then here's my interior piece C. I've got the interfacing on it and I've got the hook and loop tape on both placement parts. Then you'll just wanna place these right sides together. And you see I have my other markings so I can be sure that I sew them correctly. So I'll place these right side together and I'm just going to pin all the way around. Now you want to leave open the part opposite 
your double notch marking. So this side, I'm not gonna sew. I'm only gonna sew three sides today. So just place as many pins as you feel comfortable with. That's good for me, although you could put more. And I'm gonna sew with a quarter inch seam allowance here. So all the way around and I will sew the notched mark end closed, but not the unnotched mark end. I'll back stitch at the beginning. And here I'm just sewing all the way around this. Nice and straight, easy. Your Velcro pieces are cut a little bit shorter, so they probably won't even go in the seam. Make sure that you turn the quarter, corner with your needle down. Stitch over any pins. So as I get to the end here, I'm just going to line it up and come down here and back stitch. This is the opening. Now, next we will turn the project, or first, before we turn it right side out, clip the corners without clipping your stitching. This will help you make nice, sharp corners. And then you'll turn this piece right side out. So I have a piece over here that's already turned right side out and pressed. So here's the interior. And after I press this right side out, then I tucked the edges of the opening to the inside by a half an inch and you can see it's right here along the Velcro line so it's easy to tuck those edges in. And then I just stitched this closed. You can see the dark thread, but of course you would use thread that matches. So after you sew that closed, then it's time to mark the placement lines for your snaps. So these snaps are easy and fun. You'll mark the placement on the interior piece. Use a ruler and a marking pen. So at this end, where you've got your main fabric, the snap is centered and two inches from the edge. So I'm gonna center it here in my ruler. And I'm gonna mark it right here. And remember, all of this information is on the website. You can download it for free and you'll have it. And then on this end, it is centered and one and a half inches. So to insert the snap, we've got our handheld snap setter tool and all to help you make a hole. And then we've got, each snap has four pieces. There are these presser pieces, the part that you push with your thumb, those are the same. But then the inside of the snap, the two pieces look different. So we've got this piece right here and then we've got this piece right here. So for one snap, these are the four pieces that you'll need. So where I made a mark right here, I'm going to place a, make a hole with the awl. And don't worry about making your hole too big. It's not going to show. So we'll make a hole and then I'll put my snap through. And you can start with either piece. It doesn't matter. Put the piece on, then you use your handheld tool and the push, the push part of the snap fits in that little well right there. So I just make sure that it fits there perfectly and make sure that this part right here is centered and then just squeeze hard. And it's that easy. So there's one part of the snap and I would do the same to put the other part an inch and a half and centered right here. And I have another piece that's already done. So here's my piece with the snaps already on and it's time to fold it and stitch it for the fold and stitch wallet. So I'm going to first make my little pockets 
by folding the Velcro. So once you attach the Velcro on each side and make your pockets, then you will fold this back. Now remember, the instructions are all on the website and you'll fold this back so that it looks like that. And just grab a pin and pin it here. And now at the sewing machine, we're just gonna stitch all the way around the outside of the wallet and then it'll be done. So this sewing machine works great for going over all those bumps. Remember, you'll want to use matching thread. Turn at the corner. And of course, you'll want to make sure that you get your wallet perfectly straight before you sew it. And finish up. And your fold and stitch wallet is done for the next time you're on the go.